For thousands of years, ancient cultures flourished throughout the Americas. These early settlers left us clues to their advanced religions, colorful art, and sophisticated temples. But ways of life that had existed for centuries would soon vanish, becoming distant memories as a new religion and a new culture would soon blanket the Americas. The erosion of an old culture, the beginning of a new one. How two worlds collide next along North America's Mission Trail. Stretching from present-day Mexico into the U.S. Southwest and Florida, North America's Mission Trail paved the way for new settlements, a new religion, and new architecture in the new world. These missions of North America are as diverse as their founders, as picturesque as their surrounding countryside, and today, as controversial as the reasons for their establishment. Covering three centuries, these missions were constructed with a dual purpose, expand Spain's control in the new world and convert the native inhabitants to the Catholic faith. The mission system brought European ways to the new world nearly a century before the first English colony was established at Jamestown in 1607, and more than 150 years before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock. In fact, the oldest European settlement in the present-day United States, that at St. Augustine, Florida, was founded on behalf of the Spanish crown in 1565. The founding of St. Augustine led to the first Catholic mass celebrated on U.S. soil. It was held on the grounds of Mission Nombre de Dios, one of eventually 40 Spanish Catholic missions that would line the Atlantic seaboard from Florida into the Carolinas, and later the Gulf region into Georgia and Alabama. All of the Florida missions, though, disappeared in the early 1700s, as Indians died of disease and early British explorers sought to diminish Spain's influence in the region. In South and Central Florida, European missions never took hold, as the area's strong Calusa native tribe held off all colonial advances for some 300 years. Prior to Spain's discovery of Florida, the seeds of North America's mission trail had been planted on the islands of the Caribbean, Spanish conquistadores landing at what was then called the West Indies, their gateway to the Americas. Names like Cortez, Ponce de Leon, and Nunez de Balboa would become synonymous with the early exploration, ultimately changing, for better or for worse, Native American cultures. For Spanish explorers, there were two routes to seize North America's riches. At first, into Florida, and later into Mexico, and finally into the southwestern United States. Originally in search of gold, the first northern explorers ventured to the west through present-day Arizona, and then into New Mexico, while later travels took the Spaniards straight up through Mexico, through El Paso, and to the banks of the Rio Grande. When no wealth was found in the area, the first mission chain of the U.S. Southwest sprang up in New Mexico in the late 1500s. Later explorations brought Catholic missionaries into Texas, Arizona, and Baja California in the 1600s, and finally to Alta California in the 1700s. With the establishment of North America's missions, new architectural styles were introduced into the Americas. Structurally, the missions of North America differ from region to region. To this day, characteristics of mission architecture can be found throughout the U.S. Southwest, with columns, arches, and domes suddenly dominating these great expanses. In Texas, an abundance of limestone helped the settlers build sturdy, fortress-like structures. In bordering New Mexico, the missionaries, using adobe, often built simple shrines that blended with century-old buildings such as those in Taos. In the Sonoran Desert region of southern Arizona, the missions are characterized by ornate detail in a Baroque style. Here, builders also used adobe, brick and stone, to create some of the most elaborate structures in North America. On the shores of the Pacific, the 21 missions of Alta California today boast an architectural combination of original ideas with turn-of-the-century renovation. Adobe was the material of choice in Alta California, while stone churches are widely found throughout Baja California. The commonly accepted belief is that the missions were largely constructed by the native populations under the direction of their European overseers. The missions of Spanish North America became more than religious centers where the Catholic faith was spread. Most missions, built in the shape of a quadrangle, offered an all-inclusive complex for worship, education, and community functions. 
The mission complex soon became the focus of the community, a place where work was done, classes were taught, and where social gatherings took place. At first, the missionaries drew the natives to their missions using food and other gifts. Once there, missionaries taught their converts with symbols, many diagrams like these musical guides at California San Antonio de Padua are painted on the mission walls. Although they were sent for religious purposes, the missionaries of North America are also credited with bringing new agriculture to the area, as well as elaborate irrigation systems to service the new crops. In addition, the Spaniards introduced the horse to the new world, an animal along with cattle that would become the foundation of transportation, commerce, and farming for hundreds of years. Fruits, vegetables, and a variety of plants now considered common items can also be traced to the missionaries, among them grapes, date palms, citrus, and wheat. The old and new crops and European livestock helped the missionaries to be self-sufficient. And to bring water to their mission complex, an extensive water system was often constructed. Aqueducts like this engineering marvel in Querétaro, Mexico, transported water for miles to the mission grounds. Complex dams like this one at Mission Santa Barbara and water ditches like those found in San Antonio would then store this most valuable of resources. The missionaries of North America came from a variety of ethnic backgrounds. Contrary to popular perception, not all of the missionaries who walked these halls originated in Spain. Italians, Germans, Croatians, and Czechs, among others, filled their ranks. Sarah and all padres were Catholic, and four separate Catholic religious orders oversaw these missions, spreading the new faith among North America's native people. Jesuits, Franciscans, Dominicans, and Augustinians combined to change the religious landscape of North America. Their quest with the cross met many barriers, especially a language barrier. Numerous linguistic and cultural differences among the natives made the Spanish conquest extremely difficult. Diseases devastated the native population. The Native Americans' immune systems could not protect them from diseases brought by the Europeans. After 300 years of triumphs and catastrophes, North America's mission trail would end here in 1832 at one of the last missions built, Mission San Francisco Solano in Sonoma, California. The missions fell into ruin as Mexico won its independence from Spain and priorities shifted to the new burdens of managing the new republic. It was not until the 20th century that conservation efforts would restore many of these missions to their original splendor, bringing back important pieces of North American history. When the Spanish missionaries first set their sights on New Mexico in the 1500s, the area included all of the land from the Arkansas River west to the Colorado River. Today, these boundaries are more defined, and the present-day state of New Mexico still features a rich and interesting mission history. It's here alongside the Rio Grande, where the Spanish first set foot around 1540, and soon began making their mark on the tribal lands of the Pueblo Indians. Although not all of New Mexico's missions were set up on the banks of the Rio Grande, this consistent flow of water from the Rocky Mountains did open the door for irrigation. The missions of New Mexico are diverse, ranging from some of the simplest found in North America to some of the largest outside of Mexico City. Most of the churches of New Mexico are derived from the design in use in Mexico in the 1580s and 1590s. They're straight buildings with flat roofs, no transepts, and a fairly low level of decoration. Although the intent was to create more complex structures than what was originally constructed, a lack of funds, supplies, and the remoteness of the region led to a more simplistic design. These churches rose up in the sprawling valleys of New Mexico where the Spaniards encountered one of the most established societies in North America. The natives lived in villages or Indian pueblos like those found today in Taos. They were many roomed structures built of stone or adobe, several stories high, terraced and built facing a central plaza. Franciscan missionaries eventually succeeded in converting the Pueblo Indians to Catholicism. To this day, strong beliefs and respect for the Catholic Church continues. In 1540, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado sets out for New Mexico in search of gold and turquoise and the famed seven cities of Cibola. He enters what is now Arizona, follows the San Pedro River to its junction with the Gila River, 
Then over desert and rugged mountains, his group reaches what is now New Mexico. But two winters in the river valley turns up no great wealth. After exploring West Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, the Coronado expedition returns to Mexico empty-handed. In 1581, the Rodriguez Chamuscado expedition enters New Mexico another way, the first through the Great Pass, El Paso del Norte, leading the way for the establishment of New Mexico's first permanent mission and the beginning of Spanish influence in the area. In 1598, Don Juan de Oñate formally takes possession of all lands north of El Paso in the name of the King of Spain and establishes the province of New Mexico. Over the next 200 years, some 48 missions were founded throughout New Mexico and thousands of Native Americans converted to Christianity. But the spread of these missions didn't come without a price for both conquerors and converts. Dozens of missionaries were murdered at the hands of the Pueblo Indians and growing unrest among the natives caused the Great Revolt of 1680. Rebellious Indians, oppressed and mistreated, banded together and drove the missionaries out of the heart of New Mexico, forcing them to seek refuge. Some of the Spaniards stopped briefly here at Mission Isleta, located just south of present-day Albuquerque, but the tension grew worse, and eventually the missionaries, along with some of their Indian converts, were forced to temporarily abandon New Mexico altogether. They retreated hundreds of miles south to El Paso, where the mission of Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe had been built in the 1660s. Today, it is in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. On the other side of the Rio Grande, in present-day El Paso, Texas, a series of pueblos were soon set up, the first such establishments in all of Texas. Today, these reconstructed mission churches of Isleta and Socorro and the Presidio Chapel of San Elisario serve their surrounding residents, most of them descendants of the retreating Pueblo Indian converts. The church at San Elisario once stood on the Mexican side of the Rio Grande, but when the river shifted direction in 1848, it found itself standing in irony on U.S. soil. Twelve years after the Great Revolt of 1680, the missionaries at El Paso received word from Mexico to re-enter New Mexico with hopes of retaking the land in the name of the King of Spain. What followed was aggressive mission construction and the rebirth of Hispanic New Mexico. The legacy of the New Mexico missions, a blending of cultures, a blending of religions. The arrival of missionaries into Texas in the late 17th century was spurred by threats from French explorers in and around neighboring Louisiana. This became the northeastern frontier of Spain's New World conquest. A line of missions eventually sprang up throughout eastern Texas and later on the banks of the San Antonio River. A place of refuge and rest, the San Antonio River brought the Franciscan missionaries to the heart of Texas. Mission San Antonio de Valero, more popularly known as the Alamo, was the first mission in the San Antonio area. The Reverend Balthazar Janicek is the Archdiocesan Director of the San Antonio Mission. San Antonio de Valero became used uh, as a military kind of fortress um, more than it was ever used for um, religious purposes. Huh? And that, of course, always comes out. Huh? Uh, and since it didn't have a roof on it, it was then even chosen as, uh, as the a fortress in the time of the battle for Texas independence. By 1731, five missions had been founded in San Antonio. Mission San Jose, Concepcion, Valero, Espada, and San Juan Capistrano became the focal point of Spain's Texas stronghold. The San Antonio missions were constructed with a common theme, built in a style similar to a Spanish fortress. Stone walls, often stretching eight feet tall, comprised the outer edges of the mission complex, surrounding a large plaza area which was the center of mission life. Along San Antonio's mission trail, the mission dam and aqueduct continue to bring water to nearby residents. The San Antonio mission water system is the oldest, still active, man-made water system in the United States. 